Katie, make sure he feels welcome. And let's give the round of applause for James! time in Portland. Yeah. This uh, convention center is huge. It's really epic. See Seattle's. I will sometime. Um, yeah, the two spirals are like giving the metal sign. Oh, can't miss it. So uh, what I was thinking to do was show you like 10 minutes of outtakes that most of you probably haven't seen, just to give you something special. Um, it's on the, the Volume 9 DVD, which is just a continuation of the old DVD line. You know, DVDs are out of date now, pretty much, but we're, uh, we're, we're working on the Blu-ray version, which the Blu-rays are in a totally separate line of things, where it's the, the Volume X series, like we, you know, we did like Mega Man, where it's a different series. So those ones, we're, we're trying to get Volume X2 out, hopefully soon. So hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have X2 and that. Um, which this stuff I don't think is going to make it until like X3 actually because we're trying to fit as much as we can on the Blu-ray as possible but it's like taking a while to catch up so that way you'd be able to see them in HD the way they the way the newer episodes are in HD so yeah let's take a look at this turn the volume up a little here how's that sound? alright this is all the times that I've uh, messed up, basically. Yeah, remember that time you went to Universal? They wouldn't let you on the rise unless you wear a stupid fucking hat. <laughs> 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 Why did they make you wear a hat? Remember that time you went to Universal and they wouldn't let you on the rides unless you wore a fucking hat? <laughs> yeah, apparently there's a big stamp collecting contest going on at Universal. So. So every time you finish on the rise, you get a stamp. So, shoot. Why was this game so purposed to predict the events of 1997? Or was it just trying to... Like Princess Leia and Jabba in Return of the Jedi. The special edition of Star Wars, 97. <laughs> Princess Leia and Jabba in Return of... Like Princess Leia and Jabba in Return of the Jedi. The special edition of Star Wars in 97. Oh, fuck. I'm like back full circle. Fuck. The special edition of Star Wars in 97. Oh, fuck. We're back again. <laughs> just, just, just trying to... The special edition of Star Wars in 97. Fuck. We're back again. Trying to find a... Trying to find a final... Trying to get a final answer here. Let's cut this shit. <laughs> it's made by Mindscape, proving that not every LJN movie-based game it was made by Mindscape, proving that not every NES movie-based game was made by LJN. But it pisses me off! I feel like an ass! I can't let that go! It's... 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 <laughs> this game is a rare breed where I legitimately can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. It's... type of game... <laughs> make it good, playing real poorly. I legitimately... and question, is it really you? But it's the straight... I can usually adapt to crap. I can... I can usually adapt to crap. I can usually adapt to crap. But this game is a rare breed where I legitimately can't figure out... I can usually adapt to crap. But this game is a rare breed where I legitimately can't figure out what I'm doing wrong. It's the type of game designed to make you feel like a... Fuck! It's a game designed to make it appear that you're playing real poorly. Fuck! To make you question, is it really you? But it's the strange... I can usually adapt to crap, but this is a rare... I can usually adapt to crap, but... To make you question, is it really you? But it's the delayed... I can usually adapt to crap, but this is a game... Fuck. It's the type of game designed to make you... Fuck! Use the fucking third... To make you question, is it really you? 
but it's the strange hit. But, uh, but it's the delayed controls and strange hit detection. Mmm, got it. <laughs> Or a watch is not cool enough. Yeah, kids nowadays, they tell time on their phones. Yeah, it looks so cool going around wearing... <laughs> I don't need this shit. I can wear a watch. Or a watch is not cool enough. No, no, no. Kids nowadays, they don't... Or a watch is not cool enough nowadays. No, no, no. Kids, they look at the... I don't need this shit. I can wear a watch. I don't need this shit. I can wear a watch. But... <laughs> it's bullshit. The game demands I play by its schedule. So what am I... Oh, no, 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 no. The seamen are mating. And there they are. They... <laughs> it's very creative. It's basically a form of virtual pet game. A pet that happens to be a sarcastic, wise-ass son of a bitch. But... The shitty sequel, Crow, Shitty of Age. Fuck, fuck. <laughs> This game is worse than a mischief night. <laughs> this game is worse than a mischief night prank. Mischief night is throwing toilet. <laughs> this game is the equivalent of throwing toilet paper after you wiped your ass on it. Fuck the crow up his fucking bird ass. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Crow his bird ass and fuck you, you fucking clown face. <laughs> this game is worse than a mischief night prank. Mischief night is the equivalent of throwing toilet. This game is the equivalent of throwing. And fuck you, you fucking clown face! <laughs> fuck you, you fucking clown face! Joker, kiss makeup wearing King Diamond, Beetlejuice, Alice Cooper, Marilyn Man- <laughs> Beetlejuice, Alice Cooper, Marilyn Manson, motherfucker! <laughs> Your mother, you- <laughs> ah, There's too many guys! Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, easy does it. Sonny, get the fuck out of my way. Yeah! Squash that bitch! <laughs> get the fuck out of my way. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah! Did you see that? I fucking squashed that bitch! Look what is happening right over here. <laughs> It's a thing, it's your face. <laughs> it's to actually be like a, re like a face underneath. Right? Like, you're thinking it's stuffed with newspaper or something, but it's actually like, there's actually like a face underneath. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you ignoramus. Ah! Oh, are you alright? Shit. <laughs> Oh, no. 
now comes the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> it's so appropriate, but I just happen to be filming this whole scene near the, the litter pan, the duty pan, the shit box. <laughs> And what pisses me off the most is that nobody else seems to think this is that hard. But I think that aiming this... But for me, I find trying to aim the newspaper into the mailbox is like trying to slingshot a dingleberry from a playground roundabout that's situated on a moving parade float while aiming into a bottle cap that's tied to a Himalayan snow cap. <laughs> <laughs> to a Himalayan snowcock while drunk. <laughs> NASA. But for me, aiming the newspaper into the mailbox is like trying to slingshot a dingleberry that's that's a dingleberry from, <laughs> from a playground roundabout. It would take somebody from NASA who knows how to calculate exactly when a certain asteroid is going to pass by a certain planet when there's a when. It's, when uh, I <laughs> slingshot a dingleberry from a playground roundabout that's situated on a moving parade float while... Uh, fuck! <laughs> situated on a moving parade float aiming into a bottle cap. That's not nice. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to calculate my, sh my cat's... <laughs> Three of seven. But for me, aiming the newspaper into the plate... In the plate? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> but for me, aiming the newspaper into the mailbox is like trying to... Well, I'm still trying to calculate my cat's shit comments. It spreads across the carpet after wiping its ass on it before its anal glands have been evacuated. <laughs> yeah. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> oh, so uh, you like that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, here's the part where we just do whatever you want to do. Just ask some questions uh, about any of the production or anything that you want to ask. Um, I'm just gonna shut this here. So, yeah, just, uh, I guess, just raise your hand. Uh, right th down there, uh, you got the, uh, you got a multicolored shirt, you got like a tie-dye shirt. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering where you came up with your inspiration for all your lines. Like, I was wondering where you came up with, uh, whether you had a one asshole, uh, but Roku's going to down with beer. Like, where'd you come up with that? Oh, wait, that one specifically, or any of them? Any of them. Any of them, yeah. I, th I don't know. They just kind of come out out of nowhere. Like, I just think of, like, what, what's... What, Did you some, write them down somewhere? Uh, yeah, all the quotes I come with, I mean, like, they, I just work them in the scripts. So sometimes it's like something that I might have thought of earlier before the review, where it's like, oh, okay, I don't think I've ever said that in a video. Or, I don't, or it usually comes from, I don't think I've ever heard anybody say this. Nobody's ever uttered the, this exact phrase. So I'm like, <laughs> you might as well just say things that, that just strike the ear as like, what, what the hell was that that he just said? You know? um, that, that's the idea. Uh, it's just a um, flavor with original language and swearing, um, but but sometimes it comes down. I'm just writing a script and I'm sitting there just staring at at the the script. I'm like, okay, I got to come up with something. I got to come up with something, and then and then it either happens or it doesn't happen. So sometimes it takes a while. All right, uh, right here, uh, the glove. Yep. Uh, when are you gonna review another uh, system? The Jaguar one was one of my favorites. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, the Jaguar one was. Uh, one of my favorites too, actually, especially the CD one. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, no, I like to do console reviews a lot. We've been, been talking about trying to do the the Amiga or the Laser Active and things like that, but they haven't really played them. They didn't really give me enough material to work off of. But there is um, something coming up, which will be it's kind of like a breeze through a bunch of different not consoles, but accessories more like peripherals. So. Um, you might see some more of that coming up. Uh, right here. Alright, so, <clears throat> when you think of, like, the AVGMs just ranting, just swearing, and bodily fluids, 
Which one comes to your mind as your favorite, like the one you're most proud of? It, like, to get that on record. Oh, sure. Video. Most most favorite phrase? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the go. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I, just, I, want to, I want to get this recorded. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, All right. As far as my favorite phrases go, I would think um, the first ones that come to mind is in uh, The Howling Earth Stole Christmas because it was just all rhymes. Yeah. And I really enjoyed writing everything in rhyme. I think the one that sticks out the most is uh, uh, What turkeys worked on this murky mess of monkey jerky? Some quirky jackass in Albuquerque? <laughs> Um, right back here, I'll just start working my way back. Yep. Uh, yeah. Do you have any, uh, like, guilty pleasure games? Like, games that are bad, but you just can't resist playing them? Oh, yeah, guilty pleasure games. I, I've been asked that before, actually. I don't think I've ever really come up with a good answer, because I, I can't think of any that would be guilty pleasure. I, I guess, in a way, you could say they, they're all guilty pleasures, you know? <laughs> um, Jekyll and Hyde. Um, but, uh, one that I know is bad, that I, that I enjoy, I, I can't really put my finger on one. Um, I, I think it's just like all of them in a way. The nerd really is all about just a guilty pleasure, you know, just a masochism, just torturing myself with bad games. So I think that's what it's really all about, you know. Uh, let's see, right... Oh, boy, let's... I'm gonna go... I'm, I'm gonna start to go in the back. Like, how, like way, way, way in the back there. Yeah. Oh, plans for a feature horror film. Uh, plans, but nothing solid yet. Like, I still, I have a bunch of different ideas for them, but I just don't have the time to start on any yet. But I, I do hope that the next movie I make may be horror, or it, may, or it could be science fiction as well, but I, I'm, uh, at the moment, I'm leaning towards horror a little bit. So, uh, we'll see. Um, let's see, right here. Dave, why are you ending Monster Madness, and what's next? Oh, Monster Man, well, I'm ending it and what's next. Um, the, I mean, it's, it's, if you, the, the long answer is in the, the video, the Monster Madness announcement that was posted earlier this year, but the shorter answer is just that uh, like it, it's getting harder and harder to keep up with every year and to keep finding more horror films that I can fill into like 31. Because um, I have to be like, I, I have to like, watch more of them now, where before a lot of them I just knew already, or like half of the movies at least were ones I've seen before and I already kind of know, um, but now it's more, it's coming down to more where, okay, I have to watch all these and the time is just adding up and it's getting harder and harder to do it now, where I can't, I can hardly even pull it off, you know, uh, by October, um, but also I like to do more movie reviews spread out throughout the year and, and devote my time to things that can come out all throughout the year instead of cramming everything into October because it's like this long period in the summer of just working on Monster Madness and not really releasing much else when I could so this is because everything's so focused in October so it'd be nice to be more spread out and also to not have to only do horror I could review you know all kinds of genres of films um, and hopefully free me up to work on that original horror film or something else uh, all these other projects I've just been waiting in line, you know? Um, uh, right in the aisle here. Yeah. Whatever happened to that Plan 9 remake that you were in? Oh, the Plan 9 remake. Uh, it just came out uh, uh, recently. It, uh, I know it played in, um, I, I believe it played in a few theaters. Um, they had a few premieres, and it was picked up by a distributor. They put it on DVD in Australia. I think it finally came out on DVD here, I'm not sure, but uh, if you have a, like, if you have an Australian player or a region free player, you, you know, you could buy it on Amazon, I think. Um, then it came out on a Voodoo, I believe, it came out on a streaming service. Um, but yeah, if you look that up, look up Plan 9, Darkstone, or anything like that, um, and you'll, you'll, you're sure to find it. Uh, let's do, uh, um, uh, right, right in the back here, the blue shirt. Yeah. Oh, uh, what resolution? Oh, I, oh, I got two. Oh, I'll get you both then. I'll, okay, I'll get you first. What, what resolution you said? Yeah, what resolution? What video resolution are you shooting? Oh, like uh, 1920 by 1080. Is that, that that that's what you mean? Yeah. Uh huh. Just like standard HD. Oh, and right, right behind you here. Yeah. You? Yeah. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I was trying to uh, get her in the, the blue shirt right there. Yeah, you... 
<laughs> oh, I'm sorry, say it one more time. Oh, my favorite game to review? Um, I, I think, oh boy, there's a lot of them. I, 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 I know my favorite episode might be the Rob the Robot one, but that's not really like it. Yeah, but I don't think it's the same question, because I think like which game really was the most fun to me. Pro probably, it must have been Jekyll and Hyde, because I had the most hatred toward it. And that kind of makes it more fun to pick apart. So I, I think for that reason, that was probably the most fun to review. Um, right here. Have you ever thought about like diving into Famicom games? And the, there's a lot of games that didn't come out in America, and there's a lot of weird games that might like give you material to work with. Oh yeah, like there's tons of bizarre games on yeah. Famicom. So no, I'm still looking into it. Um, I haven't done too many. Uh, I know uh, that that one game, that Patton game, that oh, we. Where is it inserted? Yeah, insert into fucking box or something. And that's just uncalled for. <laughs> then, like, because I curse at the games all the time, I never seen a game curse back. At the game. <laughs> um, uh, right, right here. Yeah. Oh, I was just wondering, do you actually drink Rolling Rock during most of the episodes, or is there just like one bottle that you might fill with water? Yeah, uh, no, it's mostly that. It's mostly I, uh, the Rolling Rock bottles are mostly filled with either tea or water or something now, <laughs> where I, I saved a bunch of bottles up. So that's what it mostly is, because it's just I don't know, it's just not. It's you know, just drinking while trying to like concentrate on remem remembering lines and stuff. It's just not the best, you know. Um, uh, right here? Yeah, uh, speaking of Rolling Rock, it's a bucket list, but is there any possible way that me and my brother can down a Rolling Rock with you sometime? <laughs> no, maybe, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, may maybe tonight, we'll see. <laughs> but I, I have my signing uh, from uh, 6 to 8, I believe. I believe it, you know, but is it 6 to 8? I, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, 6 to 8, I just want to make sure I'm telling the truth. Um, so I don't know if you want to bring a Rolling Rock, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hey, right here. It's more of a comment. I didn't really grow up with a Nintendo system, but mm -hmm. I wanted to thank you okay. because you made me feel better for not growing up with a Nintendo. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. Well, there's a, there's a positive uh, service that I've done then. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, how about, uh, I'll go right in the middle here. Yeah, you right here? Or, uh, sure, yeah, here you go. go. <laughs> yep, you have the hat, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, first, thank you again so much for being here. It's really cool that you came to the show. Woo! Sure, yeah. 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 You might have answered this before, and I might not have heard it, but have you ever thought about what you would do if the ABG and Incident Massacre didn't take off the way that they did? Oh, um, I, if, if it didn't, if ABGen didn't happen, that's yeah. the same way. I, I assume Massacre was so much earlier that I think Cinemassacre would still be continuing the same. There'd probably be, you know, it would probably be more really just uh, making films. But I don't know if it would be, like, I probably wouldn't be doing, like, web series then. I guess I would have been just doing, like, a film every year or two. Um, you know, because, like, that's the way it was. It would take, like, a year at least to make something, like, even, even a short film. You know, I did that zombie film, The Deader the Better. That was like a year and a half production right there. It was like a 17 minute film. Um, but then once you jump into the world of web series, now it's not like, you know, you don't get a chance to take your time on it. It's more about like getting the videos out fast and, and on a regular basis so people can keep coming back and watching. So it's, it's a totally different thing. That, that's what I would see myself doing different, but I, I'm glad nothing different happened. I'm glad it all happened the way it did because you know, this is this is the best. Yeah. So, uh, oh, you're right there. Yeah, in the red shirt. Hey. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering. Um, do you have any advice for someone that's going to do a video game and wants to take part of the game they actually do like? Oh, okay. Uh, advice for someone who's doing game reviews. Yeah. And what was the last part again? Uh, about taking part of a game that you actually like. That you, a game you like, but you uh, all at the same time want to take part. Oh, okay. Advice. So I'll say there's a game that I like, but I want to pick it apart, and... Have you ever done that? I, I think so, I sort of, not really. Like, Castlevania. Yeah, yeah you the Castlevania games, Mario 3, a little bit, but I don't, I don't know if I so much ripped them, like, took them apart, really. Um, but yeah, it, but you can you can do that, like Ninja Gaiden, you know, you can talk about how frustrating certain parts are in the game, but still praise it at the same time. Yeah, and then as far as advice goes, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a... It's hard to, to, to answer because it's like there's so much that goes into it, but it's the, the best thing I, I could 
best advice I could give is just, you know, do what you enjoy doing. Like, don't uh, try to do, like, what you think everybody else is going to want want to see. Try to do something. You, like, you got to like it first, basically. So as long as you enjoy what you're doing, because it is really hard to do something consistent. If you're trying to d keep web videos coming on a consistent basis, that's really hard to do. So it's uh, a lot of dedication. So if you enjoy it, then, you know, that, that's probably the most important thing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, all the way back here, near the, 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 the wall. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Uh, speaking of Mario 3, uh, you used my band's cover of, our, of your song in that video during the fight scene. Oh, nice. Uh, appreciate that. Thanks. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, are you? Uh, hang on. Um, it was the, the hardcore one at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slaymaker. Yeah, Slaymaker. Yeah. yeah. Slay maker. yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. That's pretty awesome. Oh, well, good to meet you. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to um, ask actually about the Ghostbusters non review. Yeah. And how that like kind of broke the internet. Oh, I have no idea. I guess it was a slow day on the internet. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Like if you thought anything like that would have happened, or if you got a good example, because all of us have seen Pat Oswalt and all this stuff, and like, what, oh, like, yeah. uh, Jay, like who, people, all these people who've never heard of Jay Rowe before now. So like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I, 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 I have no idea. I mean, you tell me. I, I was just like, you know, like you were the ones looking at it, so I, I don't really know. But uh, it was just like strange. Like, like it was like, okay, well, if they didn't see the video, then it's like, okay, they're not going to, like, they're not they're after me for something else that they're, they're making up that I didn't say. So I was like, okay, well then, you know, like everybody said, like I, I never planned to see the Independence Day sequel because it didn't have Will Smith and it just didn't look interesting. There's a Ben-Hur remake, which I just thought was ridiculous. I was like, how can you remake Ben-Hur? And it's like, there's all, all the things that I don't see. I don't talk about things I don't see that much, but Ghostbusters was something a lot of people expected me. So it was like I, I kind of had to just make the announcement and be like, oh, hey, just so you know, I'm not going to be seeing this just because it doesn't, it, it, you know, Dan Aykroyd was promising this Ghostbusters 3 uh, movie for years and years to see the, the original crew back together one last time. And nothing wrong with the, 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 the new crew. It was just wanting to see the old crew in there to pass the torch, you know, the same way that in Star Trek, um, Leonard Nimoy was in there as Spock, passing the torch on to young Spock. And um, Star Wars Force Awakens, they had Harrison Ford as Han Solo, but passing the torch onto the younger cast. I think that's the way it should have been done. And yeah, they got them in there. Like, they all had their endorsement. Uh, so I heard that they all have cameos, but they're not as their characters. It's just kind of like these really, like, throwaway kind of things. And, you know, I haven't seen the movie, and, like, I even said in the review, like, maybe it's good. You know, I, I don't know. But from what I've seen from the trailers, it didn't look good. And that's... Trailers are the reason why you to choose to see movies or not. That's what a trailer is. It's to advertise the film and be like, okay, well, do you want to see this or do you not want to see it and everything. So, yeah, so there was definitely no, um, I had no problem with the cast that they got for the, the younger Ghostbusters and certainly not the gender. You know, I definitely, I even said in the video, it doesn't matter, male Ghostbusters, female Ghostbusters, like everybody's equal to me, you know, so it didn't mean, like, N never what was it about the gender, but that's what they made it into. Um, like, oh, if you don't see, see this movie, then you know you're sexist or something. So and that that was really a shame. So that that there was like a big mess like that going on. And maybe there are some people who actually were um, that was their reasons. And I kind of stepped into it. You know what I mean? Like got labeled with the wrong crowd or something. But uh, I, I really loved uh, Andre uh, Black Nerd. Uh, he did this great video on it, and uh, I remember he, he said the same things that were on my mind. He said, like, I mean, he saw the movie, he said it was, like, okay, and that, um, like, he got negative feedback either way when he did some other video on it, so no matter what you say, it, it you know, people are going to come after you. Um, but he, the, the phrase, I remember that just cracked me up, was when he said, uh, if uh, girl meets world could be set in the same universe as boy meets world, then why can't Ghostbusters be set in the same universe as Ghostbusters? Just that they, they wiped the, the, the canon clean 
I was also kind of upset that they waited until Harold Ramis died to do it. Like, why did they wait so long? And then finally, it it, it happens right after that. It would, I thought maybe like just wait like maybe five years or something. Let let that you know kind of settle. I just thought it was a shame, but that, I don't think maybe the intention was for it to be any disrespect on him. Like you know, I, I don't think maybe it was just like meant to all be a loving tribute, but just the way it came off, I just didn't think it was a good choice to go ahead with that movie at that time. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I mean, I could just talk about that forever, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, so let's take some more questions. Sure. Um, how about uh, right here? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to make this clear, mm -hmm. can you adapt to shift? <laughs> can you adapt to shift? <laughs> um... I don't think you can. No. <laughs> um, uh, right here. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if we're going to see any more regular content on the You Know What's Bullshit series and Board James. I'm trying to bring back You Know What's Bullshit. Um, like Board James finally came back after that. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like one at a time, I'm just trying to resurrect each of the franchises. So, like, every time when one series has to wait for a while, and that one will come back. And then meanwhile, the next one will come back. So it's kind of like this slow rotation. But you know what's bullshit? is now kind of like caught up in the real where I think that's going to be next, hopefully. It might not be that elaborate, but I might try to, like, knock out a few of them, hopefully, maybe soon. Um, uh, right, right here? Yeah. Um, do you plan to do another crossover with the Nostalgia Critic? Do I plan to do another crossover with the Nostalgia Critic? Well, yes. Uh, all the way back here, uh, yeah, the Mario hat, the one that's waving, I think. Oh, sure, that, okay, why don't you guys both go one after the other? How about I, sure, all right. Did you ever find yourself halfway through a project and wish you hadn't done it, or painted yourself into a corner with something, killing somebody off, anything like that? Um, did I ever think that I painted myself into a corner? Any, any regrets? I, any regrets? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I project, say, why did I write this, or why did I start this? Okay. Like, like a project that's just like, okay, why did I do that? Or it's like a piece of crap, look back at it. Um, <laughs> no, off the top of my head, I mean, there's... Lots of obscure ones like that, like, they're, they're, I don't know, Mighty Joe Rampage was one, and that was, like, nobody's ever seen that, so who cares? Um, uh, like, there were a lot of projects, like, back, that I did back in the 90s that I was like, okay, well, that, that was crap, but it was fun, you know, it was like, it was just a good memory. But I, I think the only ones I could really say it to was, like, ones that have been seen a lot. So the only thing I can think of is any of the nerd episodes I didn't like, because those at least have been seen, like lots of people watched them. So I think like the Mick Kids one always sticks out to me, like, like one where it was like, I picked the game because it was McDonald's and it was funny. I was like, oh, look at this, this, this game's got to be terrible. And then I played it and it wasn't that bad, but I still went through with it anyway. And I was just like, okay, well, I got to kind of try to pick this apart. And then I look back at that, I'm like, ah, that episode was kind of mediocre. I mean, I know some people liked it, but... That was kind of like one of my weaker ones. Um, yeah, uh, right here. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's right. I gotta get you too. Uh, why don't you get? Oh, yeah. uh, all right, I'll get him first, and then I'll come back to you. Yeah. Great. Uh, what's the most surprising thing about AVGN? My most surprising thing about AVGN. Like anything about it. Um, most surprising thing about AVGN. Uh. Yeah, or something that happened because of it. I, I can't. I, I think maybe maybe the surprising thing is really just that it, it took off. That just that it was um, like a lot of other people remembered the same games. Because at the time I made those those first two episodes, I wasn't thinking like that many people would even remember the games, you know. Um, so I think that was probably the most surprising thing. Just that it. Um, like I knew there were people out there. I knew like a lot of people had to remember it, but I didn't know that it was like a like retro gaming was as big of, you know, would become like as big of a phenomenon as it is, you know, that it, that still, after all these years, you know, so many of us are still playing the same games, still talking about them, parodying them, and, you know, all the different things that people have done on the internet with video games is very creative. 
So it's, it's a big culture, big, bigger culture than I expected. Um, yeah. Yep. So I think we all love it when the nerd is like the angriest because, you know, that's when all the shit comes out and we all love it. Are we going to see any episodes later on where like the nerd like really just completely just goes bolt, just fucking batshit crazy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> easy answer. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, that, that's probably the most fun thing about the characters that he can, he can be totally nuts. Sometimes he's like really, really angry at Dick Tracy and at Batman. Like, like, you, like re actually, it really sounds like you really were like personally pissed off at the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was Good. like the best part of it. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, glad you like that. Um, how about uh, in the, the, the side here? Yeah, hey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. hey. Um, You're the first person I ran into coming in. First person I ran into? Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and actually, um, uh, first a quick comment. Um, I, e I, uh, I have a blog where I review movies, as I mentioned, um, mm -hmm. and I re uh, reviewed your movie uh, a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and I emailed it to you, and mm -hmm. you wrote me back, oh, cool. and you posted it on uh, Cinemasker, among all these other reviews. It really oh. meant a lot to me. You, oh, thanks. You inspired a lot to me. You added a lot to me. If there was no angry video game, there, there would be no movie-watching psychopath. <laughs> movie-watching psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Look, yes. man, man, I got a Facebook page, shit. Cool. Uh, anyway, what if I told you there existed a good Bugs Bunny game? Um... I'd, I'd be interested to know what it is, yes. Space Race for the Dreamcast, and also PS2, and mm -hmm. uh, also the Looney Tunes back in action game for PS2 and GameCube was okay. So, okay. Um, maybe cut Bugs Bunny a little bit of slack next time before you decide to take your shit on his head. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. oh, I think the guy next to you had a hand up too, right? Yeah. Did you? No? Um, yeah. How many times do you have to rewrite a script when you play a game? Oh, how many times do I have to rewrite a script when I play a game? Uh, it, it depends. I mean, it, 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 it's never like, it's never gotten to a point where it was a finished script and then it got like rewritten, but like revised, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it like I make some passes at it, um, but it's usually, it's more just like a slow stepping. It's kind of like I write out like an outline, I know where this is going to go and I know where it's going to end at. Um, so I come up with like the basic idea, and then I start fleshing it out, actually writing it in detail and like word for word. But then, then, then it's a slow process because then it's like a lot of times I have to stop and then research something, and then you know, fact check some things that I write, and then, and then like then it's coming up with like some jokes. And it's like oh I don't I don't really like that. It's not funny or whatever. And then I'll come I might come back to that part. But it's, the, the writing is slower than ever now. I think it's the writing is the part that takes the longest because then I'm always trying to top myself or just equal it. Like I'm like, oh, well, this is like the same thing I've written before. I want to make sure that this is funny still. So um, I, I'm harder on myself now than I ever was, basically. Hey, right here? Yeah, I got one more question. Mm -hmm. Is it actually possible to be viability? Because I got this last year. Mm -hmm. I got it from Jared and he says, like, it's impossible to beat. Mm -hmm. I tried to, try to like, beat that challenge. It's actually impossible. Have you ever gotten at least Remotely close to the end game with this piece of garbage. You no, know, I've never gotten that far in Bayou Billy. Yeah. Um, so I, I would believe it's impossible, but also it's the things that I thought were impossible proved not to be. Like I thought Battletoads was impossible to beat, and Bootsy beat it. So <laughs> I, anything, no matter how hard, could possibly be done. I think. Yeah. Um, let's see. Someone didn't get. How about like. Uh, I have a way in the back holding the uh, the mask. I can't tell what it is from here, but hey. First of all, you're one of my favorite people ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Second of all, do you know anything about the weird NES black market? And if so, will you do a video? Oh, do I know anything about the weird NES black market? So, like, you mean like uh, third party? <laughs> Oh, say that last one again. Oh, okay. Like they get they get the software itself. Like they they do all kinds of weird things. That, you know, is that like um? Like I know some of the Famicom games have like these weird games where it's like slightly changed, the names are different, or something like that. Is it? Okay, cool. 
Sure, yeah, I'll try to look into that sometime. JonTron? JonTron did a video about it. Oh, okay, cool. All right, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for the info. Um, how about uh, put it in the aisle right here, hold up the cell phone? Oh, is that you? Okay. <laughs> Oh, you're stuck at AVG Adventures number one? Oh, you're stuck at Fred Fox. Fred Fox has got you stuck. Yeah. He, he's he's a, a son of a bitch. Yeah. My question is, have you heard of the... I think... So. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, my big question is though, um, like when you made the Mega Man on the, the PlayStation, you kind of said something like this was, it was gonna the series was gonna end and that was gonna be it. Mm -hmm. But then just a couple months after you kept moving on and making episodes more frequently, and I'm just wondering kind of what changed. Well, the the episode it, it ends with the nerd like the the nerd returns at the end of the Mega Man episode like he just it's kind of like. You know, Spider-Man 2, when he like doesn't have his powers and everything, and then he even has to like get his suit back and everything. It's like that was just the story of the episode. You know, that was just the, the narrative. So what well, it didn't have anything to do with you know real life, but it was also you know the nerd the nerd comes back at the end of the episode. I mean, yeah, he, maybe he jumps through the window. Is that what you're talking about? Well, no. What I meant was the uh, I meant the uh, like you say like when you're in the past and when you're talking to the self. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, in that part, he's like that's what inspires the nerd to continue. So his old self gets him to like come back. So he gives him the positive words of wisdom, and then he's like, yeah, that's right, I should come back. You know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's like the way it is now. It's called, you know how the videos are less frequent? It's like, if I did them as frequent as I did before, it would just burn itself out, and, and the, the videos would be, like, a lot cheaper, and they wouldn't be, like, as well thought out, and it would kind of just be a lot of the same. So it was kind of comparing that to the Mega Man series, how they, like, burn themselves out. Like, it suffered from franchise fatigue, you know? So it was kind of just a warning against that. I think, yeah, right there in front of you. Yeah, yeah you, you're in the blue shirt. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of like an emotional question. Okay. So, you know, first system I had was Sonic Adventure. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I was a kid, I had one of the Sonic Adventures. Yeah. And I remember when Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, it's really good. It's a good question. Um, like a game that makes me uh, really optimistic and wants me to, you know, makes me want to continue, and then a game that just makes you not want to continue. Um, let's see. So I'm going to say Jekyll and Hyde again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a game, yeah, right there, that d it does not make you want to continue. But um, the games that do uh, is like, um, I I'm going to say like, like Ninja Gaiden, that's probably one because it's really hard, but it, it does make you want to continue. Any of the Mega Man games, um, you know, they can get really hard, but uh, they're, you know, they, they keep you, your spirits up. Yeah. Uh, right against the wall here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's alright. No, that's okay. Oh, sure. You can go again. I'll go, go again. again. Then, then, yeah, uh, then I'll, get, I'll get you next. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you worked with like Lillian Kaufman a couple times, like which mm -hmm. is super cool and well, talks about and all that stuff. Is that kind of where you want to be to have like Cinemasker be like your own type of trauma thing where 
you know, you have all these shows now that have legs, like Angry Video Game Hero has legs. Or Jane seems like it's picked up a lot of steam. I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. And then you make your movie. It's like the idea to kind of always be independent and stay independent, or would you be more interested to become, I guess, more of like working in a studio type filmmaker? Um, I mean, I see it as always independent. You know, that's like how far it's gone, the way the way it's been, and that's that's just the way I like it. But um, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to, to working on something bigger. But I, I don't think I, I think Cinemasker is always meant to be just an independent thing. It just started as just like making movies in my backyard, and like I don't really like uh, I like working on things that are smaller because it feels more like an art that way. But when you involve lots and lots of people, and then it starts to become more like a business, and it's just like that's not really what I want. I just want it to be like, you know, I, I work better in, in small crowds than I do with like a, a huge, you know, like if it was a huge studio film. Yeah. And now right there, yeah. Since we're wrapping up in a couple minutes, I'd like to get a couple shots of you with audience. Sure. That'd be great, yeah. We actually uh, get to go a little bit longer since we started later. Oh, okay. If cool. that's okay with you. Sure, yeah, absolutely. Is that okay with you guys? How are we doing? Yeah. 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 yeah, so what was it like? It was like a 15 minute uh, or something like that, right? Yeah, so we yeah. go until 3.15 and we're going to be fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, so so yeah, do you want to take pictures right now while, we're, while I'm answering or? Uh, yeah. I'd we'll love to have you down on the floor, and I'll be standing up there to get perspective shots so everybody in the back can be seeing the shot. Sure, okay. So, just be really quick. Yeah. Sure, uh, it wouldn't would look good up here. Okay. So, let's have you stand down here. Yeah. Facing me, audience in the background. Okay. We'll go up there and get some shots. After you get it, can you get one on my phone, too? <laughs> A uh, Twitter picture. Sorry, guys. Hey, Very cool. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean the same one? Yeah, think of my nerd videos. Uh, I mean, they, they, they've always just supported like what I mean, anything I did. So um, I think they, I think they understand because they've been there from the beginning. You know, when I'm playing all the games. So it's like I don't know all, all that time when I playing video games when I should have been doing my homework. You know? <laughs> so um, uh, no, they, they really love it. Uh, that they're really supportive over it. Um, so that they're just they're glad that you know what I've been doing my whole life is is like you know, that I pursued it and I'm, I'm, I'm still going, so, yeah. Um, how about, how about the NES? Yeah. Oh, oh you had the NES? Oh, you had the NES game, okay. Well, you could, I'll get you both. I'll get the, the console first. <laughs> You said the immortal? Yeah, the immortal. It's basically like what we're yeah. talking about. You took Dungeons and Dragons, boiled it down to its barest essentials, and then put it in the hands of a world's most sadistic dungeon master. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm very fascinated with that game, actually. I, I remember, uh, I, I played it, I, I have it and everything. I, I, I uh, um, was fascinated with it ever since I've seen the stills and Nintendo Power. Because when you go into that fight mode, and then it turns into like 3D almost, and you're fighting these like freakish monsters, um, I, I liked the way it looked. I liked the graphics, but the game is just like I've never played it long enough to really get good at it or figure out. Uh, you know, it, it it's just very awkward. So 
Uh, I don't know if it would make a, a video or anything, but I am still, you know, thinking about that one. Oh, oh cool, because I've never actually played the Genesis version. So that'd be, that'd be cool. And then uh, right in front of you, the NES, yeah. Okay, um, the, the process hasn't really changed much since the, the Barbie episode where it's the making of. Um, so I don't think it would change much, but I, I do always like giving you more behind the scenes stuff. So maybe uh, someday you'd see something like that, or it might be more on the film side of things. And then if, asking whether or not I'm more passionate over films or games, they're both such a big part of my life. But, I mean, films is what I pursued. That's what I, you know, went to college for. That's what I've studied the most. Um, so that's, that's what I um, consider my trade to do. Like, I don't, I don't make video games, but I, I, I do pick them apart, though. So uh, um, I didn't know there'd be, like, a, you know, like a, a fan base for that. I didn't know that um, people would be interested to see you critique games, but it, it certainly has, so it's been a really great surprise. Um, oh, right here. Um, so you've been on YouTube for about a decade. Have you seen the culture of YouTubers since you started out? Like, what is your perspective on that? Uh, has the culture of YouTube changed in 10 years of doing the videos on there? I, I'm sure it has, but I, I feel like I'm probably not the best to ask. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, yeah, I wish I had an answer because it's a really good question. Um, but uh, I, I think there's just there's been more and more um, uh, people using it. I think so. That, that's that's been a good thing. Um, that lots of people are really creative and have uh, all their own different you know uh, ways to do things. So it's cool. Um, right here at the camera. Hey, so you're here. Is there any certain games that you're trying to find at the expo to bring home with you? Oh, good question. Any games I'm looking for at the expo? Um, oh boy, there's not much I can think of right now. I'm sure there there is, but most of anything I'm looking for is just really rare. So I don't know. Maybe maybe there's some stuff here uh, that 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 would surprise me. I mean, there's tons of stuff here, but it's I'm not sure if I'm looking for anything specific. It'd just be more like like a surprise, like I'm just looking around and then I see something like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I gotta get that, you know, so I'm sure that's bound to happen. Yeah, um, the, the, the blue uh, plushie, I can't tell what it is from here. Hey, okay. Are you planning on doing any reviews on the new one? The new what again, say again? The new one? Assimilation. Oh! I, I'm not. I'm not aware of it. I've fresh my memory. Maybe. That sounds really interesting. I've never heard of that. The new one. I so was actually gonna, I was actually, I had found one, and I was actually, I might still tomorrow if I can get in, but I, I wanted to bring, I had mine, and I wanted to bring it to you. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get it here, though. Oh, okay, well, thank you. Thanks yeah. for trying it, and for uh, for just letting me know of its existence. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, cool. Uh, did you hand up? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I was just wondering, because I think, like, the jingles. Oh. Yeah. Well, Lux is making sure, okay. Oh, no, no, she's right here. She, she's, she's going, she's asking. <laughs> so keep, keep going. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I think, like, the jingles, like, the 
Jingles Bootsy Rags for like board games are amazing. Uh -huh. So I was wondering, like, did you ever, would you ever think about having like him do one for a, a game featured in like an APGN episode? Oh, you know, yeah, there hasn't been enough Bootsy crossover with the AVG Gen, but yeah, his jingles are great. Um, as you know, he's done a lot with board James, but hopefully, I don't know, maybe that's, it's a good idea. Sometime we should get him in an AVG Gen episode, so we'll see. He's helped behind the scenes of certain things, but he's never actually been, had a song in it or been a character in it or something, so that, that would be cool. Um, let's see, a lot of hands going up. Let's see, how about... Uh, um, that was the power glove right up there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're all big fan. Love the Bear Sea Bear episode. Thank you. Um, ABGN Movie 2. Is that happening? Oh, ABGN Movie 2? No, I think instead of that, I do a horror film or something, something more in one genre. Um, ABGN Movie was like a multi genre film, it was kind of like a sam sampling platter of like everything. And uh, that was like, really, really hard to make. I mean, it was brutal uh, and took years and years to finish. So I think the next one would be less of a, like an action film. Like let, it would have less special effects, less locations, less characters. It would be more like an, an indie horror film kind of thing, maybe. So I, I have to be really smart with that to think of something like do I want to spend eight years working on this, on the same project, or do I want something that's a little more um, uh, easy to film, you know, like when Kevin Smith did Clerks, the whole movie takes place in a convenience store, like every scene is in there pretty much, so um, that sometimes you got to do things like that to just be smart. Um, but also your imagination likes to run wild, so you got to kind of choose well, how, how difficult do I want to make this for myself? Um, and what kind of story am, am I really passionate about that can be done without lots of um, locations and special effects? So I have to like strike a happy balance. Yep. Um, how about, uh, somebody far in the back, how about uh, uh, way in the corner, someone's holding up a cartridge? Yeah. Hey, yeah, it's funny, every time everybody just all looks at each other, you know, like, who, who is it? Um, so, yep. The, the shit pickle uh, plushie or, or shirt? Or uh, shirt? Were you pointing at something? Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. You're just asking if that would be available again. Okay. I, right now there's no plans for it, but I hope that someday we can. We're, we're working on trying to get all kinds of old merch in stock and, and new merch, but uh, I mean, most, I, I'm just focused on making the videos most of the time, but we are trying to get stuff like that back. Cause, uh, I forgot to review the what game? Oh, there's one on CDI? Oh, wow. <laughs> did, did you play it? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so let's see, let's get another one. Hey, right here. Yeah. Um, so I love the James and Mike Mondays videos. Uh, I was wondering if there's any chance of you, both you and Mike, coming back next year. Oh, the possibility of me and Mike uh, coming back next year. Oh, uh, anything's possible, so, yeah. We need you to confirm that. Oh, to confirm it. <laughs> yes. I'll, I'll try to drag him out here for you. I would well, love for him to come. Yeah. <laughs> where is he? Oh, where is he? He's uh, just at home working on videos. But yeah, where is that motherfucker? How <laughs> um, about uh, right here? Uh, what is the tattoo on your arm, and do you have others, and do you have oh, a favorite? Oh, this one is a, uh, there's a dragon, I don't know if you can see that much. Nice. And there's a Judas Priest trident right here. So, <laughs> it's just different things. That, I mean, I never thought in my life I would ever get a tattoo, but, you know, things just happen. So, like, as you go on, you know, you change your mind about things, uh, <laughs> devil horns. Um, yeah, no, my wife and I both got music tattoos t together, because, uh, you know, some people get their names tattooed and everything, and we, we didn't really want to do like that, but we wanted to do something together, so she got uh, 
Led Zeppelin symbols on her, and um, and I got Jewish priest. So basically, we both have like you know sharing our passion of music. We uh, put together and just had tattoos. So it's just that one then. It's two together. The, the dragon one is sort of intertwined with it. It's just kind of like you know going behind it. So yeah, and the dragon has a lot of significance. If you've seen the, the video, the dragon in my dreams. It was my earliest memory was uh, the nightmares of this dragon, which was actually real. It was in a park. It was a uh, fountain statue in a playground where I used to play as a kid. And in the video, I return after 30 years to the same playground, just in time to see them um, jackhammering it out of the ground and remodeling the park. And it was just a freaky, weird kind of circumstances because I was planning to film it anyway, but it just so happened they were like they were changing the park. When, when I came to film it. So that was just really weird. Um, and actually I've been told that the, the dragon now sits in the front by the sidewalk. So it's still there, technically. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, uh, the cell phone back here. Uh, have you ever written something like a joke in your script and just said, no, this is too much. I, I can't show this to anyone. This is, this is too brutal. They can't take it. Oh, a joke that's too brutal. Have I ever written one that I abandoned because it was just too much. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I think that one of the descriptions I use, it, it, it ended up getting used anyway, like, but like years later, it was in the Bill and Ted video where I say this game is diarrhea coming out of an old woman's bleeding vagina. <laughs> and I was like, that's just, that, that's going too far. But, and, um, that, that's just, I was like, this is going too far. But then after years passed, I was like, you know what? I'm out of ideas. I, I have to. I'm, I was like desperate. I was like, should I do it? Should I not? And I asked Mike, like, should I say this? And Mike's like, yeah, you should say it. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, yeah two, I'll get one from like far in the back. There's a. Um, oh boy, that's a. The one uh, closest to the corner on this side. Uh, it it's like, looks like a bouquet of flowers from here, but I can't tell. It's, oh no, it's a... Uh, sure, yeah, stand up, show me, what is it? So, uh, yeah, what's up? Uh, filming a video that went way over my head with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, an episode. So basically, like, it just wasn't feasible. Something that was too much to handle, where it, it, it was, yeah, where it was just impossible to do unless I took, like, a year off to finish it. Um, it would probably be the, the most recent example I can think of was the Mega Man episode, because at the end, when I fight Bugs Bunny, for the third time, which was brief, but uh, it was meant to be sort of like, uh, I wanted to, to have every character that was ever in a nerd episode come back in like a big Royal Rumble at the end of that. So I wanted to see Jason Voorhees and Freddy and the Joker and the Cowardly Lion and everything, just like, every character to show up in the room. And it was already, the video was way over my head because it had, all these games that had to be recorded, it had all, all this writing to do, it had all the, these green screen shots, and me acting with myself, so I, every time you see that, it's like twice as much to film, and then to get, to get the timing right. So like that video itself was just a monster to finish. Um, it broke the record, but that, that was the most time consuming episode ever. And then I want to do this whole Royal Rumble thing at the end with all the characters, and it just wasn't happening. So it's like, I, I have to just, it's going to just be Bugs Bunny, because that's, that's the one people probably remember the most, anyway. Oh, so one more question. Uh, how about right, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, right there. <laughs> yeah, did I get you? Okay. okay. So, uh, first of all, I have to leave like, right after this, but I really wanted to get an autograph from you on my copy Dr. Jack and Mr. Rogers. Did anyway, catch you like, right after the panel and all? Um, sure, probably. There's probably a lot of people <laughs> yeah, coming up, but okay, that's fine. you and can... Also, my question was, uh, is 
what was your, like, I know for making the movie, the whole process was really stressful. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of crap you were going with. Mm -hmm. but what was your favorite part about filming a movie that was so fun that you made it? Oh, uh, favorite thing about filming the movie. Um, I think my favorite thing was uh, when we did the scenes that I wasn't in because then there was a lot of it, it was uh, uh, then all I had to deal with was directing when it was when I was behind the camera. But the scene in particular was all the death six shots where the monsters destroying the city because we just built these giant buildings and just had them wreck it. And even though it was it was hard to pull off and it, and it was still stressful, but everything leading up to the part when the monster actually destroys it, it was like yes, you know, right when that happened, it was like this release of all the stress, and it was so much fun. And everybody, everybody on that set would huddle around the camera, and we'd play back the the footage, and we'd look at what we just shot, and we're like, oh, that's so awesome! I love how when he hits it, that one piece goes flying here, and then we'd look at it on like five different cameras and each of them got like a different angle of it happening and it was just awesome that was a lot of fun because that's just it brought me back to what i like to do is make movies yeah so i think that's the last question so uh, thanks everybody for coming i'm gonna have to yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot. This was awesome. Thanks a lot.